prospect named Bobby Orr, though, is still playing junior hockey in Oshawa with the Generals, but he is very much on the horizon. The terrors of the tangled twine tonight are rookie Bernie Perron for the Boston Bruins, and for the Maple Leafs, it's veteran Terry Sawchuck. Because first, we're taking you back to November 27th, 1965, the Leafs and Bruins at the Garden. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. The Boston Bruins are led by John Busick, who will score 27 goals this season, and former Leaf Ron Stewart, who will notch 20. Frank Mahovlich will have a high of 32 goals for the Toronto Maple Leafs, while Dave Keon, Eddie Shack, and Bob Pulford will score at least 20. Brian Conacher is a member of one of Canada's most famous sporting families. Conacher played junior hockey at home with the Toronto Marlboros before getting a taste of the NHL in one game in 1962. After a stint with Canada's national team under Father David Bauer, Conacher was brought up to the Leafs in the 66-67 season. He would play 152 NHL games and total 55 points. With vast international experience, he's also well known as the color analyst with Foster Hewitt during the historic 1972 Summit Series with the Soviet Union. Brian Conacher joins us here this evening on Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics. This is not your first game, but I guess it's really in your own mind maybe the first game with merit that you're in a Leaf uniform. Well, I was a junior in, uh, in 1961, and on uh, New Year's, December 31st, New Year's Eve, I was uh, taken on the road trip to Detroit. <coughs> um, I don't even, can't even remember whether I played, uh, but I was a, a junior, and uh, I certainly made no presence uh, in the Leafs. Um, this was their first real call-up in, uh, in the fall of 1965. I turned pro that, that fall. I'd been sent to start the season in Rochester. And like every other player in the minors, you're just waiting for that call up, thinking that, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is going to be the the big step to the uh, to the NHL. And uh, this was the first game. Now you're playing with uh, Les Duff and Eddie Litzenberger down in Rochester. Uh, what happened when the call arrived? Well, I'll tell you, it was funny. I lived in a in a house with Jimmy Pappen, uh, Mike Walton, Gary Smith, and myself. And uh, when I got called up, I thought this is it. You know, I thought well. I didn't really want to start in Rochester. I was hoping, you know, that you go down there for a month and you get the call. So I get the call, and I pack every worldly possession in my little Morris 1100, <laughs> and uh, including the television. Which now wait a minute! You took the TV from those guys much, in Rochester, much to the chagrin of my my uh, roommates. So I get in my little car and I come up to Toronto. And what I hadn't informed anybody about is that I'd pulled a groin. Um, a few days before and I just I mean I just kept it hidden I, I wasn't going to miss this opportunity when I got to Toronto uh, and Eddie Shack still tells the story today he said you're going to be back in Rochester before the television show is even over <laughs> <laughs> and it was the truth <laughs> it was the truth <laughs> so the boys back home at least enjoyed the television set well, for a little they, while long. they let me back in now uh, coming up to this team uh, in 1965 this is a team that had won three Stanley Cups in a row, but is really in a bit of a, a state of flux and transition, isn't it? I, I think so. Uh, the the call-up, the, the circumstances around the call-up was that uh, Mike Walton was brought up to replace uh, Red Kelly, and Britt Selby, uh, who went on to be the Rookie of the Year that year, uh, was injured, and that's why I was brought up. And, uh, and clearly it was a team that was, uh, was a, a veteran team, and there wasn't a lot of youth into the team. And I think that guys like Walton and myself and eventually Jimmy Pappen and so on, uh, Peter Stemkowski had made it, Ronnie Ellis had made it. But Imlac didn't really cater to younger players. And uh, so this, in my, in my opportunity to come up in this game, uh, was, uh, you know, was the beginning, for, certainly for me, of, uh, of that transition. And the Leafs uh, had a very unsettled season. Uh, and it wasn't really, and, and we really had an unsettled season going forward into 66 67 because it really didn't sort itself out till uh, well down in the season. Well, it's uh, the Boston Bruins, and they arrive, and, uh, I, and I can remember growing up and watching, and this was uh, a team that just, my goodness, they could not get it right. And, uh, and they've got a young guy coming along that uh, is playing junior hockey in Oshawa at this point named Orr that will help them turn the corner. But this Bruin team was in the, in the, the doormats of the league for almost a decade. Well, b both Boston and Chicago struggled, and, and the interesting thing is that the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens both had very, very powerful and dominating uh, farm systems. They had, you know, the, the Marleys, St. Mike's, uh, 
Victoria Maple Leafs, uh, the Tulsa Oilers. And the year I went to training camp and signed my contract, it was 85 players under contract. Boston, Chicago had struggled, and I ended up playing in a team in Rochester, which I was just called up from, which was probably a better team than either Boston or Chicago, mm -hmm. playing in the American Hockey League. And that's sort of how it was in those days, is that the, a lot of the management, uh, part of their agenda was to keep good players away from other teams. Nowadays, of course, uh, everybody, uh, any player anywhere is, uh, is up for grabs. Well, it'll be an interesting night. We're going to take Brian Conacher back to a couple of games. We're going to bring you the second and third period of this game, November the 27th, 1965. And then we're going to fast forward to January the 21st, 1967, and bring you portions of that game as well. As we get to see this Leaf team, as Brian said, very much in a state of transition. So we'll look forward to that. We're joining uh, Brian Conacher and taking him back to November the 27th, 1965. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. And as Brian mentioned, the Leafs, even though they outshot the Bruins 16 to 7, were doing it from long range. On the faceoff, Wadowitz cleared it up. Omwitz shot it back in again. It goes to the corner, picked up there by John Arbor, number 28. Who gives it to Wadowitz. He's having difficulty controlling it. Moved around on the board. Dr. McDonald, the Dean Prentice, stopped by Tim Horton. Horton having difficulty controlling it. Gets it up to Omwitz, but that's offside. Look at the big M. Really let go a ripper in the first period to tie up the hockey game 1-1. As a matter of fact, Brian, you remember that light was a little late coming on, too. The red light. Stanley cleared it off the board. Frank Mahavlis picks it up. He starts out himself. He's knocked out of the play by Ron Stewart. Shot into the Boston players' bench. I just mentioned, Bill, the Detroit Red Wings were shaken up in a bus uh, truck accident last night in Montreal eight or nine of them were uh, shaken up and cut and bruised so they were at a disadvantage going into that game with Montreal tonight no serious injuries though Thank you, Brian. And from the face off Dave Keon takes a long shot that bounce to that knocking it off to the side here's Keon centering it to Armstrong trying to get in front of the net got back out over the blue line Dean Prentice a long pass for Stewart. Keon failed to get it out. Back to Stanley. Stanley to Horton. Up to Keon. Up to center. Got it over the line. It was deflected to Stewart. Stewart out to Prentice. Stanley has it. He's knocked down. Keon and Mahomlich failed to combine, and it's shot by the Bruins into the lead zone. Tim Horton back. He passes to Armstrong. Armstrong down the right wing, tried to go through. Keon moves up. A backhand into the Boston zone means the Leafs are going to change on the goal. Jeffrey Pulford and Shaq now as Murray Oliver takes a long shot. Sotchak stopping it. Marcel Pronovo back for it. Marcel Pronovo. Cleared it to the blue line, but not out. Shot to Sawchuck and cleared into the corner. Larry Jeffrey fails to get it out. Cleared by the Bruins. Sawchuck pulling around outside the net. Eddie Shack knocked it behind the goal. Busick cleared it around on the wing. It's right in front for Oliver and Vaughn gets it down the ice. Goes over the red line. And that is icing called against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And we played two minutes. 16 seconds of the second period. There's 35-year-old Marcel Pronovo playing in his 999th NHL hockey game. Only six players have made the select 1,000 game circle. Pronovo will become the seventh tomorrow night when he plays in New York. The player with the most games logged is Gordie Howe, 1,273. And from the face-off, Marcel Pronovo to Bob Bond. Music stepped in ahead of him. It's cleared right in front of the net. Jeffrey to Shaq. Back to Jeffrey. Shooting it in. Ends up behind the net. Pulford's first in there for it. Larry Jeffrey picks it up. Back to Pulford. 
Tried to center it, he did, and Shaq couldn't reach it. Boston failed to get away. They try it again, a pass for Oliver. Got it into the lead zone, and such a trap it for Bond. Great pass for Shaq. He gets it out and down the ice. Hopefully racing after it. Grant is out of the net. He's checked by Hope right by the open corner. Hopefully trying to center it. Shaq right in front. Larry Jeffrey. Played it on the wing, and the Bruins bring it back. Usyk over the line with Westfall, and he just backhanded without looking. Bond ahead to Popey with Jeffrey. Over the line. Jeffrey took his shot. Correct stopped that. Hit the back of the net. Bob Wojtowicz. Hits it off the board. Marcel Pronovo kept it in. He hit Jeffrey with it. Cleared out the center. Marcel Pronovo again. Two shots to Popey. Popey was going the wrong way. Over to Conacher. He had it taken away from him by Westfall. Popey comes back. Over to Shaq. Stopped by Murray Oliver, then Bob Vaughn. A pass for Conacher. Into the corner it goes. He shoots it right in front. Parent caught it and left it there for Don Ory, number 26. He comes back for the Bruins. A pass to Murray Oliver. Oliver going to center. He shoots it in. The bouncer, Sotchuk, stops it to Eddie Shaq. A long pass to Conacher. With Stamkowski over the line. Back to Stamkowski. Into the corner he goes. Centered it right across the goal mouth. Conacher trying to get loose. Bruins bring it back. Kennedy. Over the line. A drop pass. Knocked into the corner. Ellis after it. Ron Ellis. To Stanley. Ahead to Stamkowski. Up to Conacher. Over the line. Took his shot, Brent stopped it, Conacher tapped it in front, and Ellis just missed it. Kennedy back to Williams. Williams down the right wing, takes his shot, it's wide. Horton. Ahead to Stemkowski. Brent Conacher. Over the line, takes his shot. Brent caught it. Knocks it down. Puts it into the corner. Bruins trying to get out of their own zone and deflects off Stemkowski into the crowd. Ron Stewart taking the face off for the Bruins against Keon. A hard race to Keon, trying to relay it back. Dr. McDonald is checked by Armstrong. Keon trying to center it in front. Clear out, Stewart over on the wing to Prentice. Right on the Bond stick. And Bond passes the two cars for Keon. The Bruins off the board. Bond breaks that up. Only to have it taken now by Arbor of the Bruins who shot it into the lead zone. And Marcel Pronovo for Frank Mahomlitz and that's broken up and shot back into the lead zone. Bob Bond. To Marcel Pronovo. Up to Mahomlitz to Keon. He goes over the line, Wojtowicz stopped him, he got a backhand, that was across the goal mouth. Armstrong covered along the board, in front of us. A long pass for Stewart, and Marcel Pronovo goes back. There's it around on the board for Bond. To Armstrong, to Keon too far. Bob Wojtowicz shot it right back into the leaf zone. Armstrong goes back for it. George Armstrong. Pass off the boards to Keon. Two Armstrong for Mahavlitz over the line. Missed the check. But Dean Prentiss got back very quickly to cover up. Pass it right in front of the net to Ashby who gets it out on the left side to Parker McDonald to Ron Stewart to Prentice. Prentice tried to center it. Dave Keon has it. Keon with Mahavlitz. Shot it in. Mahavlitz races after it. Shot it right across the goal mouth. Eddie Shad is covered. There's going to be a penalty here to Gissel. Well, Busick and Shaq were all tangled up in knots as they went over into the boards, and uh, they apparently claimed that Busick was doing the holding on the play. Two minutes for interference. 
time, 6.54. Interference at 6.54. Leaves for the man advantage, playing six men to five. Colford, Curtin back, Shaq, Douglas, and Walton. All set to go. Had a whistle there because a player, Boston player, moves into the circle. Eddie Westfall out there with Murray Oliver, Don Ory. Kill off this penalty. All set to go, and Barry Ashby, the other defense. It's cleared out over the blue line. And Mike Walton goes back for it. Walton. Long pass to Shaq to Pooper. Up the quick back, over the line. He takes his shot, and that's going up into the end blue. Not often you see Curtin back and Pulford out there on the power play. They're usually filling off the penalty. There's a lot of judging around the back. There's the out of town score in the second period. Montreal's leading Detroit 2 0. It's cleared down the ice. Westfall goes after it. Douglas and Spachuk is there first. Walton clears it back to Douglas. Now and the Curtin back. Curtin back to center to Walton. Over to Pulford. Pulford tried to cut in. Slipped the right front jack. Oh, Laurent. Made a great save on Shaq. It was right in. Shaq really whipped that one at Laurent. It's miraculous how he was able to make the save. And of course, they ganged up in front. All set for the face off in the Boston zone to the right. From the draw, Ashby goes behind the net. A pass stopped by Shaq. Shaq trying to get loose. It's against the board. Shaq trying to dig it out. It goes loose. Murray Oliver covers against the board. Oliver covered by... Curtin back, it's cleared on the wing, and Westfall gets it the rest of the way down the ice. That goes to Walton. Up the curtain back. There's his shot, right on, and Brent stopped that. It goes to Murray Oliver. He shot it by Douglas down the ice, and there's 42 seconds left in the penalty to Busey. Walton to Eddie Shaft. Over the line. Going in behind the net. Giving a shove. Hooker trying to center it. Shaq has it. Getting in front. Up the floor. And it's cleared out and down the ice. Douglas. Trying to get away. Conacher is too well covered by Packer McDonald. It goes back to Wojtowicz. Wojtowicz behind the net, over on the wing. Bruins now back to full strength for Dusik on the ice, and it's cleared up for him at center. A pass intended for Stewart. Douglas, then passes right to Parker McDonald. Stewart and Douglas fell together. But it was offside at the blue line. This half of tonight's game is brought to you by Molson. At the 9.05 mark of the second period, a 1-1 tie. Horst Kennedy over the line, stopped by Horton. Horton to Conacher. Conacher gets over the line, tried to flip it through. And Kelsey was knocked down, and back come the Bruins. Kennedy at center, over the blue line. Flips it through, Sanchuk, then to Horton. Gives it to Ellis. Ellis is checked by number 22, Bob Dillabo, and then Horton goes back. Tim Horton. Stopped by Kennedy. Covered by Ellis. Kennedy still has it. Passed it back to the blue line. Water with his shot. Sotchuk knocking it down. Stanley to Honecker. Went all the way down the ice. Touched there by John Iber. It'll be called back into the lead zone for racing. Well, you've got to give these uh, young players a lot of credit for Boston. And there's uh, Prime Minister Lester Pearson, a uh, guest at Maple Leaf Gardens tonight, who was also 
at the Gray Cup game this afternoon. That actually is a location just back of the uh, penalty box, Brian. Not the best shot of our prime minister, but the only one we're able to get at the moment. All set to go now, Williams, along with Bob Gillibo and Fort Kennedy, Bob Wojtowicz and John Albert. On the defense, on the face-off, Buck is cleared but not out, Ellis covered his man, Temkowski off the board to Conacher, Conacher lost it, it's cleared in front, here's a shot and Horton cleared it off to the wing, Ron Ellis, down the right wing to center. Over to, uh, to Sankowski, and Conacher coming up on the wing, covers his man. Williams to Kennedy, is going to be a penalty to Conacher. Play it out. Play it tall. Well, there's Brian Conacher up from Rochester, where he had four goals and four assists so far this year. A great young prospect. Conacher in the penalty box. And now then Boston will... Boston will have a to number 18, Conacher. Two minutes for a high sticking. The time, 10.24. Conacher was called up, of course, because Britt Selby is out with an ankle injury. Red Kelly is not playing again tonight. He still has a groin injury, which is sidelining him for a while. All set to go for the free throw. Comes back to Stewart. Off the boards to Busick. Stopped by Crittenback. Orlan Crittenback. Pass to Pulford behind him and it ends up at the Bruin defense. Ron Stewart, a pass to Murray Oliver, number 16. He drops it back, clearing pass to Busick. Vaughn, barely get it out. Marcel Tonebo hit Murray Oliver with it. Comes near Sotchuk to Crittenback. Crittenback shoots it around on the board. Marcel Cronin will make sure of it this time, and Bob Wojtowicz, number eight, goes back for it. Behind the net for the Bruins. He is waiting. Coming up now to his own blue line, a pass on the right wing to Westfall. Into the leaf zone, and Pulford is there first. Made it to Marcel Cronin, who shot it down the ice. A minute and five seconds left in the penalty to Conacher. Stewart. For Westfall, too far. Marcel Cronovo to Bob Bond. For Bob Pulford. For Orland Curtin back, and it just pulled a click. Eddie Westfall comes back for the Bruins over the line, takes his shot, and that goes up into the end blue, and then bounced back again. Just short of the railing, and then came bounding back. We have eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the second period. The score is tied 1-1. Ready for the faceoff in the lead zone. Parker McDonald, a shot from the blue line was just wide of the target. Parker McDonald sent it to the blue line. Picked up there, Ashby's shot is wide. Ron Stewart getting a hold of it. Turn. Marcel Tonovo shot it off the board. Stewart turned away from him. Here's Clayton for the shot. Mike Prentice and Sonchuk made the save. Hurton back to center. Stops there. To Cooper. Got it into the Boston zone and Torrent. Gives it to Don Ory, number 26. Eight seconds left in the penalty to Conacher. Hiker McDonald coming up. To center. Offside, Fleming went in ahead of Parker McDonald. Now Conacher steps on the ice, the teams are at full strength, and Tim Horton is behind the leaf goal. Here he comes with the punch, ahead to Keon, off his skate, he didn't see it, Horton follows up. Tries to break through the defense, Armstrong following, Keon, let one go, and it's just the post. Conacher, a back pass for Keon. Keon gets it, kicks it loose, Williams. Hail they get out. Stopped by Stanley. A linesman ruled that it got over the blue line somehow and back in again. A lot of close calls along that blue line so far tonight. We had two or three in the first period that the team's question. All set to go. 
Seven minutes and seven seconds remaining in the second period. Stanley over to Armstrong. Wrapping it into the Boston zone. Ori back for it to Kennedy. It rolled right in front of the net. There's nobody there, and the Bruins come back. Three of them. A pass over the line to Williams. Took his shot wide. Billabo tried to get a whack at it, and Horton leaves a four-man rush. And Armstrong. He shot it into the Boston zone, into the corner. On Ori, a pass to Williams. Williams coming down the ice. Stanley trying to get back. Williams over the line to Kennedy. Kennedy took his shot. Notchuk stopped it, and Stanley has it. Ahead to Mahavlik with Keon. There's a long shot. Look out for that one. And that one hit the top of the glass and went up into the end blue. On the face off, off the boards to Eddie Shack. He lifts a high one. Colette caught that as it was going over his head. Bearing pass into the corner. Boston Bruins cleared out the center right. Murray Oliver shooting it into the leaf zone, and Bond goes back for it. It comes up to Larry Jeffrey, who couldn't get away. Westfall takes the shot that ends up beside Sachuk to Bond. Bond trying to get out. Wojtowicz the shot. Sachuk stopped that. Larry Jeffrey. Still in possession. To Walton. Walton tried to get away. Too well covered. Now it's Marcel Cronable with Mike Walton over the line. Walton let his shot go, and that was just wide. Back comes Oliver. A long pass to Westfall. Over the line, he stopped. By the center, and he did. The rebound is cleared off to Marcel Cronobo, gets it ahead to Jeffrey. With Shaq. Over the line, knocked out again. Bob Bond moves up. Shot it into the Bruins zone, the Bruins bring it back. John Iber, a long shot, that rolled to Sawchuck. Eddie Shaq. In his own zone, gets away from Jeffrey, pass ahead to Walton. Walton. Over the Boston line, fakes the shot, still has it, falls. Tried to center it, and Pettis needs a pass to center ice, and it's broken up by Stanley. Now then the Bruins will try it again, Wojtowicz. And he ran into Stanley, and leaves the ice. Vaughn. Long pass for Conacher, too hard. Bruins again have it, Pettis. Over here to Packer McDonald. He's closing in the shot. And that was wide as Stewart tried to deflect it. Offside at the Leaf Blue line. And there's four minutes and three seconds remaining in the second period. During the intermission, Ward Cornell will be talking with uh, half M's of the Boston Bruins. We'll also uh, hear from a beautiful prognosticator from uh, the United States named Joan Stepp. And the three hockey writers will discuss the problems of selecting three stars after a game. Score side, 1-1. One, one. Puck went through, Horton skates to Sarchuk. Back to Stanley. Stanley's pass was too high for Stankowski. Ellis raced in after it, Stankowski picks it up. Couldn't pass it back, and the Bruins come down the ice. Packer McDonald at center, over the blue line. Trying to go around, Horton was turned around and knocked off to the wing. Conacher fails to get out. But Stanley brings it up, leading a four-man rush to Stemkowski. Trying to center it. Cleared it back for Horton, and he couldn't move up fast enough. Over to Stanley. To Conacher. Trying to flip it in. Shot out again by the Bruins. Stanley hits Stemkowski. Horton gets it into the Boston zone. Three minutes and eight seconds remaining in the second period. Pass to Prentice, goes all the way to center. Stanley to Conacher. To Stemkowski, he shoots it in. Brent stopping it behind the net, John Ory. Pass to Packer McDonald. Ahead to Dean Prentice, his long shot, not just stopped it. Stanley around to Conacher. 
Honecker gets away from his check. Comes up over the line. Pass to Senkowski. There's the shot. A weak one. It came near the net. Honecker was taken out of the play. Honecker tries for it again. Picked off by Tommy Williams. Who shot it around to Kennedy, but stopped there by Marcel Pronovo. The Honecker ran into Williams. Williams went down. Gets up again. Backhands the puck behind the Boston goal. And the Bruins regroup. A pass to Dillabo. Coming up the center ice for the Boston Bruins. Got it over the line, and Frank Mahavlitz has it. Mahavlitz. At center. Going over the line. There's the shot. He gets it again. Another shot. That hits Moran on the shoulder. And it goes to the corner. They have called. And from the faceoff. Uh, in the corner, center out in front. Jeffrey missed it. Goes out over the blue line. Horton covered along the board. They hold it there for a face-off. And the one that Brad seems to be really coming into his own is this number 28, John Arbor. Yes, playing his first game in the NHL. And uh, Red Funding was telling me Barry Ashby played a wonderful game against New York the other night. All set to go. And from the face-off, Jeffrey and Pittsburgh knocking it the rest of the way. Goes into the Boston zone. Bob Wojtowicz. Off the board. Stanley keeps it in. It's deflected out in front. Jeffrey took a swipe at it and missed it. Then Shaq tried to hook it loose and couldn't. 30 seconds remaining in the second period. A long pass at center. Stanley then gives it back to Jeffrey. Over the line. Took his shot and that was wide. Harton moves up. There's his drive. It goes to the board. Play is called on a high stick knocking the puck down. Definitely that way. Yeah. Ahead, a bit of a slow whistle there, Bill. I guess they didn't see the puck high in the air. It was Jeffrey, number 22, who got his stick uh, well above the net. I think uh, the referee, Bill Friday, was his view was screened, but knowing that the puck was so high in the air and hearing the slap that he finally realized that it could only be a stick. We have 15 seconds remaining in the second period. It's a 1-1 try, and from the faceoff, Jeffrey chops the puck. Into the Boston zone. Bruins now in possession. John Ory to Dean Prentice who gets it out the center. Martin turns with one second to Jeffrey. It's 1-1 after a couple of periods at Maple Leaf Gardens. Ed Westfall has scored for the Boston Bruins. And Frank Mahovlich has scored. Both players with their fourth goals of the season. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Brian Conacher is our guest and uh, playing uh, his first game as a Leaf at Maple Leaf Gardens. But, I mean, the building is, uh, was no stranger to you, uh, having played junior hockey here. But had to be a little different uh, arriving there, knowing that it was a, a Leaf jersey you're yanking over your shoulders. Well, I, I, when I looked at the tape of the game and I looked at the, uh, the game later on against Detroit in uh, the following year, I didn't see any comparison. I mean, I was a nervous young hockey player. Um, when you got called up to the Leafs, you were so concerned about not making a mistake, you invariably did. And, uh, <laughs> and Punch uh, was a very strict coach, and it was very structured, and <clears throat> you had a role to play, and if you were a left winger, you had to play left wing, and uh, you didn't wander you know, across the ice, you didn't go over it into the center ice area, and uh, I think it was very tentative, and, and I personally don't think there's any comparison between uh, this game and then the latter game uh, a year later against Detroit. Now if you're on with Ron Ellis and Peter Stemkowski, at least that's got to be a little bit of a comfort because here are some guys that you are very familiar with from junior high. Yeah, Peter uh, had made the Leafs. Uh, he he'd played a bit in Rochester but then made the Leafs clean. Ronnie was one of the few players that really went right into the NHL at a junior and, uh, and it was, so it was you were playing sort of with your peers. Um, in those days, the other thing which Punch didn't do is he didn't mix a lot of the veterans with the younger players at that time. I think one of Punch's, uh, it took him a long time before he finally realized that the younger players were somewhat the future of the franchise. He liked veteran players and uh, he was very skillful in picking up the Andy Bathgates and the, uh, um, the Alan Stanleys, the Marcel Pronovos, and had great success with them and he had a great comfort level with them. The younger players he, he wasn't as comfortable with, and, and certainly Mike Walton would have been one player that just turned him inside out. <laughs> every every say, game he was... I'm very sure he was never comfortable <laughs> with Michael. <laughs> it 
would have been pretty tough to be, I guess. But uh, you're right, and, and it's interesting. Far too often in the history of teams, I think, as you bring a young fellow up from the minors uh, who may be an offensive player, and as he gets there, he's, you're told, okay, just don't make a mistake and be a checker. Well, that's not my game. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Uh, in my role uh, now as the president of the NHL Alumni Association, I uh, bumped into Dave Schultz, not literally, uh, but uh, Which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, at a function. And he said as a junior hockey player, he was a goal scorer, 50 goal scorer in, in the Western Junior League and ended up going to the Philadelphia Flyers and somehow ended up in that role and of course has uh, is been notorious for it and, and has made a very comfortable living off it. And never was able to get out of it. No, never able to get out of it and yet the, as a junior, you know, same idea, didn't, uh, didn't play that way as a junior. And, uh, but, uh, but in those days, on the call up, you're, I mean, I can remember, I mean, I was nervous. Uh, when I look at the game, I, I look like a nervous hockey player. You're sort of tentative. You're not, you're just not so sure what to do. Actually, when I looked at the game, I wondered why I'd been called up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Punch did too. That's why the television went back to Rochester. <laughs> It's a 1-1 tie here as uh, Brian Conacher and the Leafs are tied with the Bruins after two periods of play. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. 1-1 tie, Leafs and Bruins. Let's go back to play-by-play -play action of the third period. On the face off, Iber cleared it out to center ice for the Bruins. Picked up by Dean Quintus. Tried to go around Stanley and Horton covered up. Horton just shot it out the center. Iber shot it right back and hit the linesman. Horton covers his man against the boards, and referee Bill Friday calls the play. And that's the referee tonight, Bill Friday, number five, and the linesman are John D'Amico, number nine, Brent Castleman, number 20. On the face off to Frank Mahavlik. Off the boards to Armstrong. He's given a shove by Iber. Comes up the tennis, hit by Stanley. Dave Keon to Mahomlich to Stanley. Long shot off the board, comes out in front of the net, carried by Arbor, and that's icing. Aesop goes all the way back into the Maple Leaf zone to the left. You know, Bill, I was talking with Grant Eason, too, about another tough call that happens only rarely, the shot that goes right through the net. Occasionally a weakness in the twine, the shot goes right through, and then the squawking starts, <laughs> if that ever happens. Well, we had that right in this uh, hockey game tonight on Mahavlich's goal, uh, quite a delay before the red light went on. And that was because of a high-rising shot that went underneath the crossbar. He came right out again. On the face-off, Alan Stanley. To Horton. To Keon, and he just gets rid of it to center. Bob Boyerwood shoots it right back in again, and the Bruins are forechecking the Leafs in their own zone. Horton to Stanley. Up to Armstrong. Stopped by Parker McDonald. Armstrong gets it again to Keon. With Mahomet. One man back. They're closing in. Keon shoots it. And Mahomet gets the rebound. Back up for the Bruins. The pass stopped by Stanley to Mahomet. Got it into the Bruins zone. Keon after it. Keon bended it right in front of the net. Stop there, Armstrong is shot. And Perrant got it, throws it off to the wing. And Dillabo gets it to the blue line, but Armstrong stopped him. Keon tried to get loose and couldn't, and Stanley has it at center right. To Keon, and he's checked. Horton, a long shot. Goes behind the goal. Westfall clearing it. Iber a pass. Hopefully trying to keep it in. Horton moves up. His shot hit away. Gets it again. His shot is wide. Straight out over the blue line. Murray Oliver takes a long shot. That bounce. Sawchuck made the save. Oliver the rebound. Right in front. West ball just barely get a shot. Here's right in front of the net. And Pulford gets a hold of it. Back to Shaq. And he tried to pass to Pulford and it failed to click. Back for the Bruins. Oliver to Dillabo. He shot it back in behind the net into the corner on this side. Harry Jeffrey finds an opening to center. John Ory waits for his teammates to get on side and shoots it into the leaf zone. Stanley. 
Lost the putt, cleared up the putt, knocked off to the wing. Oliver tried to get away, and Eddie Sapp picked it up. Coming down the ice, over the line. It's off the boards, tried to center it. Near the net, Hopeford after it. Ori goes to the board, Hopeford fights it with him for it, but Ori is strong enough to hold it against the boards, and the Bruin defense plan is still very tight. These youngsters doing a very creditable job out there all evening so far. I think we mentioned that Al Langlois is out with a groin injury, Ted Green out with an infection, and Leo Boyvin out with a knee injury. So they have the young fellows in there tonight. And we play three minutes and three seconds of the final period. The score is tied, 1-1. One, one. Sinkowski, Ellis, and Conacher. Williams, Kennedy, and Fleming. Here's Marcel Tolomore's shot, and that was wide. Fleming and Kennedy trying to go through. Ellis shot it, but not out. Williams trying to get his drive. Conacher ahead to Ellis. He ran into Fleming. Conacher cleared it right on to John Arbor's stick. He shoots it off the glass to center. Fleming a pass to Kennedy. Conacher takes him out of the play, and Williams shot ends up on Bond's stick. He gave it to Stankowski, who just shot it around into the corner. Here's right in front. Conacher ahead to Stankowski. Four Ellis on the right wing. Arbor covered him. Stemkowski went in after it, trying to center it. Too well covered. Fleming comes back for Boston. Over the blue line, his shot hit Bond in the face, and Ellis clears it down the ice. Arbor shot it back. Conacher went for a slide. Now then Stemkowski gets over the line. There's his shot, and that's why. Conacher lost it. It came right in front of the net. Conacher went after it. Still in the corner. Wojtowicz getting away from Stemkowski. Made pass to Williams. Williams gets away from Conacher. Over the line. Kennedy covered by Marcel Tonovo. The puck goes loose to Williams to Fleming. And it's Ron Ellis. Coming down the ice with Keon. Ellis is checked. Vaughn. Knocked down by Fleming from behind, and play is called. This half of tonight's game is brought to you by Imperial Esso, dealers, agents, and distributors. Face off outside the blue line, Keon Armstrong and Mahavlich facing center Stewart, Michael McDonald. Barry Ashby on the defense with Don Ory. Stanley and Horton for the lead. All right, he goes for the face-off. Keon. For Mahavlitz, he just failed to get away. Stewart had him covered. Dean Prentice goes back, number 17, into his own zone. Pass over on the wing. Was relayed to Parker McDonald, up to Ron Stewart. Shooting it into the leaf zone. Stanley. Covered by Dean Prentice, who fell. Armstrong is covered. Stanley gets a hold of it, though. Ahead to Mahavlitz. On the left wing, back to Keon. Keon let his shot go, and that's why. Dean Prentice. Behind the net. Watched by Armstrong. Left it there. Ashby off the boards over to Ori. Ori a pass ahead. Stopped by Horton at the blue line. His shot was weak. Prentice. Back to Ori. Keon covering him. He's chased off to the board. Ori shot it around. Armstrong partially stopped it and it's cleared by Packer McDonald. Down the ice, over the red line it goes. Stanley back to touch it. And that's icing against Boston. And we've played five minutes and 54 seconds of the final period. Score is tied, 1-1. Nice to see Hapa Amazon between periods with Lord Cornell at 60 years of age. Hap claims to be the oldest rookie ever to break into the National Hockey League. He's a church-going, pipe-smoking, no-nonsense type of fellow who can't stand mediocrity. Now set to go and from the face-off. Laying around on the board. Westfall covered by Jeffrey. Wilford 
stop right away for the puck goes. John Ivor gets it up to Murray Oliver. He's checked. Now then, Wojtowicz. At center. To the leaf line. Covered by Marcel Tronobo. Try to center it. Eddie Shad. Off the board. Coming down the left wing to center. Over the Boston line. Hill has it. Squeezed out. And back comes to the ball of Boston. Here he comes to center. Oliver on his left. Over the line. Stops. Falls. Marcel Tronobo to Larry Jeffrey. And he just failed to get away. Shaq has it. Eddie Shaq for Larry Jeffrey. Stopped by Westfall. To Fleming. Marcel Tronobo started right to punt. Imlach, the manager, and he gives it to two youngsters who are right at the box seat there. And directly in front of them, Red Fleming, who certainly blossomed into an exceptionally high scorer in the NHL. On the face-off to Marcel Tronovo to Bob Bond. Up for Pilford and Jeffrey. Jeffrey racing down the ice. Brent lets it go. Williams gets in there. Players call as it was cut by Williams. to give Fleming an awful lot of credit, Bill. When he started out in pro hockey, they said he couldn't skate, he couldn't stick handle, and couldn't shoot. He was a hard-nosed hustler who played hockey like a football linebacker. But he worked, uh, worked hard on all aspects of his game. He always said he could score goals. Nobody believed him until last year when he scored 18. He's very dangerous, Brian. Particularly from in front of the net. Horton now coming out. A pass to Senkowski over to Ellis. Ellis down the right wing, trying to go around. Oh, he's too well covered. Got around on the boards for Williams. Up to Kennedy. Kennedy coming down the ice. For Fleming, and went over his stick. Fleming waits. Centered it. Came all the way back here to Ashby. His shot. Stopped by Conacher, who puts it out and down the ice to center. Boston Bruins in possession. Shoot the puck back in the lean zone. Stanley around on the boards to Conacher. He's checked. Horton to Conacher. And he's checked again. This time it's Pennis coming back for Boston. Took his shot and that hit Sotchak's stick. Into the boards went Conacher. And play, of course, is called as the puck went into the crowd. On the faceoff, Mahavlis gets it out to center. Made by John Arbor over to Bob Wojtowicz to Prentiss. He's covered. Gone off the board for Keon. Broken up by Prentiss. Got back into the lead zone. Patrick out of the net. Marcel Tonovo to Armstrong. To Keon. And Mahavlis too high. Cleared up to Prentiss. Prentiss to Stewart. He took his shot and that was why. As Sotchuk just got a piece of a screen shot just off the target. Keon. Back by Wojtowicz. And Armstrong steals the puck. Trying to get a shot. Let's a backhand go. Prentice covered by Keon. It's against the board. No further play. And there's 11 minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the game. That shot that Stewart fired was just off the target. Sotchuk made a play on it anyway, and the rebound was a screen shot that just failed to find that open side. Interesting to see Stewart and Armstrong battling out there. They tell a story, I don't know whether it's true or not, Bill, that during fall training camp, Stewart called Armstrong in the middle of the night and said, Chief, don't forget we're the team that beat you 11 nothing last year. You better watch out. <laughs> All set to go, and from the faceoff, Bruins have possession in the corner. Look, they stopped Horry before he could get away, but Horry recovered. Over to Ashby. Stopped by Stanley to Pulford. Pulford is knocked down by Horry, and back comes Ashby to center over the blue line. Still has it going right in. Took his shot, and Sotchuk gave the save. Shot. Trying to get away. Pulford does. Over the blue line. Still has it. 
Hurry covers him, though, before he can make a move, and Bob Dillabo feeds it to Murray Oliver. Over the line for Westfall. Centered it. Stanley is there. Borshak, who let it go. Ashby. To Hurry. Back to Murray Oliver. To Westfall. In shot, hit Larry Jeffrey. He cleared it, but not out. Alan Stanley. To Bob Popper. Larry Jeffrey gets back to cover up to Horton. Over to Stanley. Shot into the Boston zone and stopped there. Ashby went right in front of his own net. Larry Jeffrey got in front of him, but the Bruins bring it back. Murray Oliver. Over the line, a pass to Westfall. Puck rolls loose, Eddie Shack after it, too well covered. Pass ahead to Conacher. He goes over the line, there's his shot, a hard drive. Conacher after it again, center the right and spot. And Kowski is knocked down. I saw Cronenberg pokes it loose. Conacher has it again, over the line. Tried to center it. Wojtowicz is checked. Stemkowski passed it back down the ice. And Fleming has a break. One man back. Fleming closing in. Getting in front of the net. Still has it. Excuse me. Four. Let's watch the instant playback. The Bruins come up the ice. Fleming at center with the puck. He breaks in over the blue line. Wants some posse stick work. And climbing here. He gets the opening. Player in the crease. Sachuk is complaining about a player in the crease, and Sachuk is really hot under the collar. That's what the argument is about. The Boston player was in the crease when Fleming scored, apparently. Whether he was pushed in or not is another story. right into Sawchuck's crease and Sawchuck draws a 10-minute misconduct penalty. All set to go in front of the face-off. Fleming's goal at 10.54 is now 2-1 in favor of the Boston Bruins. Now then, down the ice for Fleming. Over the line to Williams. Here's a chance for Williams to shot. Sachuk stopped that. I saw Pronovo to Frank Mahavra. To Dave Keon. Here's his shot. Parent knocked it down. Here's Armstrong with it. Back to Marcel Pronovo. A shot in the Bruins. Here at the center. A bomb. Pass to Mahavra. Alex goes over the line. There's his shot. Let's stop that. Armstrong lets one go. Batted but not out. Bruins finally sit it down the ice. And it's Williams. A pass. Wojtowicz is there. Intercepted by Armstrong. Going over the line. Armstrong left it there. Or he went down. Keon after it. Prentice is covered. Patrick McDonald in the corner. Checked by Armstrong. There's his shot. It hit Wojtowicz. Went over the blue line. Armstrong shoots it in. Brent caught it and left it for Dean Prentice. Coming up to center. Tried to go over the line. He stopped. Play is called and there's going to be a penalty to Stanley. Set for the face-off. There's the out-of-town score. Montreal 3, Detroit 1. 
It was Alman from Barkley and McGregor, 824, Russo at 1326. All set to go for the face-off. Venice, Hector McDonald, Ron Stewart. There's a shot. Bartok steered it into the corner. Stewart hit by Douglas. Hurt and back covers a Bruin player against the board. Play is called. A rather placid second period, Bill, but the game is really opening up now, and I think it was precipitated by that goal by Reg Fleming. Boston leading two to one with seven minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the game. Hitting back at center right, takes a long shot. Back forward is Ashby. Got it around on the board. Here it gets it out to Prentice. To Patrick McDonald. Back to Prentice, he's hit hard by Douglas. By the center, it's not Chuck. Covers up and there's no further play. All set to go for the face off. Five minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the game. Fleming getting his shot and that's wide. Keon to Mahavlitz and he just shoots it down the ice. And hit Wojtowicz. Into the corner. Armstrong races after it. Centered it. Got a hold of it. Back up for Kennedy. He's checked and Mahavlitz has it again. There's the shot. And that was grabbed by Perrette. He's holding it there. I don't know whether Perrette was trying to hold on. Or you'd almost think he'd need a crowbar to pry that one out. Mahavlich has really been winding up tonight. I don't think I've ever seen him shoot harder than he has in this game. At least six of them. Blistering shots. Austin Bruins are leading by a score of 2-1. to one. Four minutes and 32 seconds left in the game. All set to go. I noticed Brandon no Smith has left the bench. The puck is cleared up at center. Vaughn. A long pass intended for Keon. Failed a quick. Marcel Pronovo. Two back for Hoblitz. Hoblitz takes a long shot on there. Point making another save on the Hoblitz. Big pass along the board. Marcel Tonebo keeps it in. Dr. McDonald after it into the corner. Ahead for Stewart. Marcel Tonebo stopped it against the boards. And they hold it there for a face-off. This half of tonight's game is brought to you by Imperial SO dealers, agents, and distributors. It is in the Boston zone to the right. Then Kelsey Walton. And Ellis played down the ice, and Ron Ellis, for the first time this season, is playing without his helmet. Martin. Long pass to Walton. Walton racing in. There's his shot. And he pulled it wide. Ellis, a shot. Here's Stemkowski trying to center it. He did. And it's cleared to the blue line and out. Stanley. Shot it over the line. Boston shoot it out. Dan Leder Walton stopped by Murray Oliver. Shoots it back into the lead zone. And it's Stan Lee to Ellis. Up the center. He hits Tamkowski. Boston come back. Murray Oliver over the line. Tamkowski has it. To Walton. Offside. There's young Mike Walton, and boy, he has a hard shot, too. I didn't think he could put uh, so much power into that shot that was just off the corner a moment or two ago. This is the critical stage of the game now for the Boston Bruins trying to protect that 2-1 lead. 
They'll be checking tenaciously from here on in. Not that they haven't been. The Boston Bruins line have certainly been able to stay with the Maple Leafs tonight. You talk about Gordie Howe's 600 goals. Punch in like a given UC for just one or two of them now. On the face off, Stanley brings it up on the left wing. Takes back, gets it over the line. It's quick, quick, it keeps it in. Williams fights him for it. Horton gets his shot. Creighton back in the corner, trying to center it. Kennedy, a pass for Fleming. Gets it to the line and over. Hooper, shooting it back in. Bruins have it. And then they finally, with Fleming, shooting it down the ice into the leaf zone. Stanley to Curtin back. Against the boards and held there for a faceoff. Got the face off, and he shot to Tim Horton. He shot it high, Don Ory stopped it, Parker McDonald gets it in over the line, and Horton is back. Horton to Curtin back, failed to get away. And it's offside anyway at the blue line. Jim Lack trying to find the right combination out there, Bill, making a lot of changes now in the latter stages. On the faceoff, Frank Mahovlich missed it. Douglas, pass to Ellis. Ellis racing into the corner, centered it right across in front. Douglas lets his shot go. Mahovlich with a whack at him, and it's steered out. Down the ice comes Prentice. He stops. He waits. Michael McDonald started into the corner. Martin to Mahavlik. And Mahavlik gets rid of it by the Prentice. Off the board. Tim Horton. To Douglas. To Keon. Over the line. Horton brings it in offside. And we have a minute and 23 seconds left. There's Ron Ellis who has given up wearing that white helmet. Still trying to locate uh, Milt Schmidt, who left the back of the Boston bench a while ago. I'll set for the face-off. Murray Oliver. Eddie Westfall. Bob Gillibo comes back. Shot over the line. Mahomet goes after it. Thanks for Westfall had him covered. Horton slaps it into the Bruins zone. Morant knocking it behind the net. Shot around on the boards. Out to Murray Oliver. His pass. Horton breaks up. Horton to Mahavlitz and he missed it. Now then, Douglas. For Mahavlitz, less than a minute to go. Sotchak is coming out of the net. He goes to the boys. The Bruins player knocked their John Arbor. And that means a face-off in the Boston zone to the left. Here we go now. Six attackers. The net is empty. Boston leading two to one. Pat Dims is directing traffic now. Back of the Bruins bench. All set to go for the face-off. On the drop, Wolford got it. The puck goes loose to Armstrong over to Douglas. There's the shot. And Frank grabbed a hold of it for a face-off. A lot of pressure on a rookie goaltender now with 43 seconds left in the hockey game. Leafs choosing six attackers. Net empty at the south end to our right. I wonder if Pulper would try one of those slaps from the space off. And the block goes over to Armstrong. Armstrong takes his shot. That hit a leg. 
Armstrong has it again. A backhand went across the goal mouth. Hodlich is knocked down. West ball steered to the other side. Hit behind the net. Hodlich trying to center it. It's side into the corner. Made by Packer McDonald down the ice. It's going to the red line. It didn't go over. Douglas Armstrong, 18 seconds. For Walton. Sat back again. Armstrong is checked by Westfall. He hit Douglas. Eight seconds. Clifford turn. Over to Horton. Five seconds. A pass is broken up. Sat down by Ashby. There goes the bill again. It's over. Bernie Perron, Reg Fleming, Bob Pulford, the three stars, nowhere in there listed Forbes Kennedy. Who well, should have been a star, as yeah. uh, it was obviously uh, interference with Sawchuck, and here's another reason why they should have uh, instant replay and video replay and everything else. Well, uh, certainly, uh, it, it, you know, it's so obvious. In, in those days, uh, somebody obviously missed it. No opportunity to go back, but clearly shouldn't have been a goal. Now, uh, uh, Forbes Kennedy and Reg Fleming are not shrinking violets by any stretch of the imagination, and if they were going to be a part of the three stars, this is pretty much how they had to go about their business. <laughs> well, the first rule when you're on the ice was keep your head up. For both of them, you yeah. got that right. And if they're on the ice together, they may be running into each other, too, on the same team. At any rate, uh, the Boston Bruins win this one by a score of 2-1. to one. We're going to fast forward then to a game played in the 1966-67 season, January of 1967, actually. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV.